Hello, friends. It's just, uh, I always say that and I stop. And it's the way I feel about this moment, that it's a profound friend and everyone I'm speaking to and way beyond that too. Today, what I want to talk about, what I've been reflecting on, is when, or the hope, that one day science will really become about a conscious relationship with nature. And I want to tell you what I mean. We real, are aware, we all, of global warming. We're aware of environmental changes. But what we don't usually realize is that what science is, and it, it's like a codifying, science and mathematics, a, a codifying of a language of relationship to external things, to objects. And what it's allowed us to do is have just tremendous power over our environment and also a profound and deepening understanding of the nature of the reality we live in, in the, or more specifically, the nature of nature. And right now, of course, there's always an economic kind of process. There's knowledge for the sake of knowledge. There's science as a question, what is this? and an examination at ever deeper and deeper and deeper levels. I read an article recently about a determination that the electron is slightly oval in shape. And you got to smile because the kind of physicists that, that, and engineers that can design an experiment in which to figure out the shape of an electron, which is in, in fath unfathomably tiny, um, is remarkable. And the flip side of that, of course, is that we, if we're on a consciousness path, we're deepen, deepening into our knowledge of the object, deeper and deeper into the relationship between self-awareness and our egos, self-awareness and our fears, all of the levels of meaning that we live in uh, and levels of story that we tell ourselves. But science is interesting, and I've always... Most of you know I was a physician. I went through medical school. You have to study the sciences before medicine. And I've never lost my interest in science. I read regularly in science. And what I've come to really look at is, yes, the economic interest means that science ends up having to be applied. And it's the application of science that leads into some of the problems, the side effects of the things that are more than just knowledge for the sheer joy of knowledge. But we have always, every time we figured out anything, if we figured out a stone that could be shattered in a way that you could make a knife point when we were 20, 30, 40, 50,000 years ago, we made those things. We made weapons for hunting. We made weapons for many purposes. Um, and of course, when we discover a drug, we market the drug. When we discover a mechanism in the body, we find a, if we can find a drug for it, we market that. And the, that's where things get complicated. But if you look really carefully at what science is doing, it's, it's actually letting us understand the nature of our universe. But more importantly, I would love it when science becomes a conscious relationship with nature. Think about what that would mean. Right now, we're learning so much about how nature operates, bacteria, viruses, human bodies, the, our collaboration, our community with, with so many organisms that are not just the cells of the human body, but bacteria and viruses and fungi and other things. And what happens when we, what we're really discovering basically is that nature is a wholeness that works together in a way that is in complete balance. Nature is infinitely sustainable. And we are that aspect of nature that steps out of that inf infinitely sustainable, unconscious, embedded quality with nature, and we become conscious. And as we become conscious, we are operating pretty much 
according to our own self-interest. And that self-interest has led us to making life better and better and better in so many ways for ourselves. There's, actually, I've read that there's less poverty now than there's ever been before in the world. That doesn't make poverty something that isn't sad, but, but we're going in a certain direction. At the same time, the consequences of our success with science has been all the things I mentioned before, climate change and global warming being the, the paramount examples. But what we're really learning is we're learning that this wholeness of nature is being disrupted by what we're doing. We're learning that it's human beings that are causing the heating of the planet now. We're learning that it's human use of insecticides that were, were damaging the eggs of falcons and causing those animals to, back in, when we were using DDT, those animals to become endangered. And we stopped using DDT, but then we started using glyphosate. Now we're learning that glyphosate causes cancer. Glyphosate is the, the pesticide that's in Roundup or an herbicide that's in Roundup, um, like the Agent Orange of the Vietnam War. So what we're learning is how we're damaging nature. And we're also learning how nature works. What if we, we really saw that what we are doing is we are that aspect of nature, becoming conscious of nature, that science is about understanding nature so that we can consciously be in relationship with nature, so that we can be consciously obedient to nature instead of just dominating nature for our ends, our human ends. Imagine humanity understanding that we are earthlings, understanding that our science is, is allowing us to be con conscious of nature itself so that we can become obedient to nature. We can literally build our world, our societies, our in infrastructure, our housing, our food raising, everything that we're doing. It could be, in fact, a conscious recreation of the infinite sustainability that nature is itself. And no other creature is conscious of this. No other creature can go, oh my God, the glory of it. They live in it. They're embedded in it. They're part of it. No other creature that we know of. But here we are. So I'm just sharing that vision with you. For me, everything I learn is taking me closer and closer to not only love of this planet, but wanting our learning to be in service to what nature wants for us. If nature wanted, in a certain sense, if creation made us conscious, not so we could destroy the environment in which we evolved, but so that we become consciously celebration, conscious celebration, consciously celebrance of the magnificent, the wonderment of nature, and that we ourselves, we ourselves use all of our science and all of our technology. And I think that's where we're going to go if we are going to survive as a species. We're going to have to use our science and our applied sciences and our technology and our engineering all in obedience to nature, to imitate nature consciously, to become that aspect of nature that's actually conscious of itself and lives in conscious wonderment, gratitude, and obedience to nature. Ridiculously far-fetched, I know. But I actually think that's what we are. That's why we're here. That's where we have to go. We, humankind, and I don't know how much time we have to do that, but if we wanted to, oh my God, can you imagine? Thank you for letting me have a few moments to reflect like this with you.